Hi and welcome to another view. Today you join me again from that to comfort of the house. But what we're going to do is do a little bit of through a bait preparation and a little talk about pellets. So on this back to basics, a lot of people pellets can get really confusing. There's lots of different varieties and lots of different sizes and all different kinds of colours that we can use for different for certain things. I'm just going to go through a basic way about pellets and a little bit of how they react in the water and how we can prepare them. So in front of me you have you see five different selections. Now I haven't got every different size a millimetre of pellet because there's absolutely tons of them but the main sizes that we use in uh, commercial fishing uh, two mil pellets, four mil pellets, six and eight mil pellets. I haven't got any six mil pellets um, in hard but I have got some six mil soft pellets and eight mil pellets. They're pretty much as big as you're going to go in commercial fishing. So, four mils. I've got two different colours. Again, this can vary on different types where you go in and different uh, venues. So, if the water is a little bit more coloured, um, you might favour a darker pellet. And if it's you know, if if the if it's a little bit clearer, you might fancy a lighter pellet. It's completely up to you, and it's always good to have a bit of different colour variety to use for baits um, and hook baits, especially if you're fishing a feeder. So what we're going to do is go into a little bit of preparation first. So as you can see, these three here are hard pellets. Uh, most hard pellets uh, will float to some degree and will need a little bit of soaking. Although most fishery pellets, so when you go to a fishery and you should always check the rules because they might use their own pellets, they usually do sink. And the reason that is, is a lot of people in commercials, the fish shallow or they're throwing the bait in and it needs to be able to sink quite quickly. Now the reason for the floating a lot of the time is the high oil content. If you see a pellet with a high oil content, as, as you will know from science experiments when you're a kid, if you've got oil and you put that on top of water, it's going to float and sink slower. So always a good idea to see if you are just buying a product rather than something from a fishery to see if it's a sinking pellet or a floating pellet. Because I've seen tons and tons of people where they fish those pellets and they are throwing them in and think that they're sinking and they're just floating straight out of the peg. So let's have a flip round and talk a little bit about first uh, the ones we've got on the end which are expander pellets and how we prepare them and what they're used for. Right guys, so we're going to start with expanders and like any other pellet that you can get, they come in various different sizes. These ones are 4.5, you can get 4 mil, 3 mil, 2 mil, um, 6 mil, 8 mil, and the list goes on. So, expanders are a little bit, bit different and this is where, if people are watching this video, there might be a little bit of controversy in the preparation of them. The reason I say that is, uh, you may have heard of, if you're new to fishing, maybe not, but if you are already fishing, you will know about pellet pumps. And basically what that does is you add a little bit of water, you add, add your pellets and you're vacuuming the, the air out of the tube effectively and that's drawing the moisture into the pellet which makes them sink. I, I, don't, I used to do that, I don't do that anymore. Basically I, I add water and I add them to it, as soon as the, the, the plump up and the soft I give them a little squeeze under the water and then they're good to go. Never had a problem with that. I'm not saying my way is the right way, I'm not saying it's the wrong way, it's just the way I do it. So I'll, I'll quickly show you how this is, uh, how, how we get on with that, and then we'll come back to it and see what they look like after they've uh, uh, gone up in size. So what I'm going to do is actually I'll nip to the camera and I'll just zoom in a bit closer so we can get a little bit of a bird's eye view. So as you can see we've got our glass here and we've got the farming pellets. Uh, these ones are 4.5 should I say. I'm just going to take a couple of them out and I'm going to just put them next to this glass on there and that's going to give you a little bit of an indication of how small they are so they're probably around a 3 mil size maybe yeah around a 3 mil size I would say uh, in comparison to a true sort of 4 mil and um, they're, they're a lot smaller uh, so what the reason obviously that is is that when they swell up that's the 4.5 mil so we're just going to add a little bit of water, you can use pond water, you can, again there's a big debate whether you use pond water or you use bottled water. Again, that's completely up to you. Um, and we're going to add those, those pellets to there and you can see straight away because they're quite aerated that they float straight away. And that's, that's 
all you need to do and the whole of your fishing session now you will be able to just keep them in that water so what they'll do is in 20 minutes time they will sort of plump up and fluff up go soft and, and, and squidgy and we will show you the next stage of them and then obviously how we can leave them and hand and have a little explanation of how we fish with them so join me in the in the wonders of edit where we come straight back and see what they look like Right okay, guys, so we've uh, let those expanders um, soak for probably about 15 minutes and we've come back to them and you can see the floating, I'm just going to take one out and you can see the size wise that they've, they've grown considerably in comparison uh, if I just get actually the comparison from the side of it and I'll put that next to it on my hand Um, here we go. So side by side, you can quite you can quite easily see that here is the expander fully done, and here is the expander that's not been soaked, and you can see the complete difference um, in that product. Now, if you look, you can see they're all floating. So this is where my little trick comes in. So I put in the water, and I squeeze the pellet softly. And then let go and as you can see that pellet sunk to the bottom of the water and with the weight of the hook as well it's gonna, it's gonna basically work perfectly so you don't actually need to use and i'll just squeeze one in this to, in this jar as well if we can grab hold of one um you can see that you don't have to use a pellet pump it's again if you're on a tight budget and you don't want to spend any money, you can see that one's sunk to the bottom of there. Um, if you don't want to spend uh, an extra £15 on it, which I know people, this is the idea of this, uh, is simplicity and not having to spend a lot of money. So you can see, you can see there that that one has sunk to the bottom right in the middle of the glass and that, that's, that's what we're looking for. So join me back on and uh, we'll go through a little bit about macro pellets and how we prepare those. Right guys, so the next thing now we've looked at those expander pellets and obviously how we, uh, how the texture and what we use them for. Uh, we're going to look at the next thing and this is soft hooker pellets. Now they're a little bit different to an expander pellet. You can get them in various different flavours, colours, sizes, all pretty much are the same scenario. Meaning you open up the cap like so, you take one, they're already soft and you hook your hook onto them. And it's really quite as simple as that. Um, these are really good for all times of year. They stay, not, uh, stay on a lot better than an expander does. As we've just gone through, the expander is a lot better for maybe shyer bites, smaller fish, and although you can catch on double uh, expander down the edge and things like that, um, I tend to use them more in winter. Uh, whereas these um, soft hookers, are great all year round and they're a good sort of pole fishing bait. I, I, I won't really use them on the rod too much and I certainly wouldn't use them um, on the feeder too much. Uh, it would be uh, on the pole and close up to islands, things like that, where maybe putting an expander on or a hard pellet, I would, maybe I just want it, it, the hook through it rather than um, a hard pellet. Maybe they've been a bit funny with the hard pellets. Um, sometimes it's just good to have those with you. Um, although there's a thing called S pellets, which are usually six or eight mil pellets, and they're a bit tougher and usually in red um, krill flavour. I really like those, and I sometimes put the um, quick stop through that. So if you've ever watched some of my other sort of hybrid fishing uh, feeder fishing videos, you will able to see uh, how we put those on, and they're the, probably the exception for, for me using them on feeder. So. Always good to have hookable pellets, six mils um, or four mils, and you're good to go. It's just a, exactly the same way of hooking it by nicking that hook through. So moving on through through to hard pellets. So again, what I was saying about hard pellets, they come in so many different varieties. Uh, these are just Bobco's own uh, pick and mix selection, and I, I get these sometimes because they're, they're good feed pellets, and you can get loads of different colours and varieties. It just for, for a five or three bags, you can't really go wrong. Um, and it allows you to just pick and mix some colours. Sometimes I just get these and put, get the red ones and the green ones and put them through my uh, through my mixture of, of uh, normal ones. 
Um, but then obviously on venues where, where I go to Lindholm and Oaks Lakes and things like that, you have to obviously have their, their own feed, uh, feed pellets. So these ones, four mils. So what I was saying before, these ones here um, are what they're called sinking. So uh, when you fire them out, they will sink. So we've got obviously the water to, to demonstrate that. And then you add there and you can see the float up to the top and they're sinking down and that's what you want you want to get the couple of them there that are floating um, and that's the same in every batch you get a couple that float and then you get a couple that sink so i've just put about eight in there and you've got a couple that float and they might be just ones that are slightly more aerated than the other ones so put some dark ones in there as well and you can see with the dark ones again that majority of those are floating to the floor now the little bit of a, an indication um, when you're using a, a pellet and you want absolute to definitely ensure that they were to sink every single time. I always check them like that with a little bit of water. And if I find maybe there's a few that have uh, stayed on the surface like they have there, what I'll do is I will put some water over them and I'll maybe leave them 30 seconds with that water and then strain them off. So it's, it's, not, it's only breaking down the outside and make sure I fully drain them. Um, and then it's just breaking down the outside and making them sink quickly. I don't want to make them soft all the way through into the grain. I want them to be able to be catapulted, but 30 seconds uh, is a good rule. So that goes me, leads me on to um, the two mils. Now, two mil pellets, I'm just gonna adjust myself to see a little bit better um, on the old knees. So two mils, these are probably what I would say uh, in whatever format that you would use more than any other pellet um, in regards to feeder fishing. So they're used in obviously hybrid feeders, method feeders, um, cage feeders to some extent, um, endura banjos and banjo feeders and everything you could possibly imagine. Now preparation of these, I know a lot of people struggle and they, they maybe get the the sticky ones and things like that because they're not sure on how to do it and it does vary on different times of year and different pellets vary to vary. A good rule for, for a thumb realistically is if you're getting a product where I mean a, I'm not going to go through the names um, because obviously we're under, uh, we're not here to uh, promote brands but if you're thinking of any top names, uh, what we, when you use those you go on the rule of two minutes per, sorry, a minute per mil. So two minutes would be for a two mil pellet. And that means two, mil, two minutes would just soak over with water. And then you want to fully get off that water. So you need a, a, a pellet wet as good so you can obviously lift them straight out and really shake them. Where Preston Dunes, you can zip into them, a guru do them, or all, all, um, all types of uh, to companies now. And you want to be able to Soak them underwater, you can put flavourings in there if that's what you want to do, it doesn't matter what colour they are. If it's a company brand, two minutes for a, for a two mil, and then strain them off and leave them about 15 minutes and they should be good to go. Now, if you're using a, a pellet that's from a sort of a fishery venue, uh, so like I say, Oaks or Lindown for example, all these sort of ones that are like Bob Co's own and things like that, they tend to be a faster breaking down pellet. Now, I don't know why, but the only thing I can think of is because these big companies make absolutely huge batches sell all over the world, there must be some sort of stabiliser in there to make sure that they don't go off. So it, it must take a little bit longer for them to break down. Maybe it's more oil. Um, so when you're going to do these, I do them for a minute uh, for two mils uh, and I do that because of that exact reason and I always do that and it always works and they always work out perfect. You've just got to allow them to sit for that 15 minutes until you can pick them up with it in your hand and squeeze them and they stay together and then you can brush your hands together and they'll fall to pieces. That's the kind of texture that you're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to replicate that now by showing you how we're going to prepare them. So these are the two mils and again like I say these are the ones that I will be doing for around that minute and what we're going to do is fill these up with water 
like so. So again, it, some, some say tap water, some say um, pond water. Personally, I always use pond water. Um, and I always sometimes add an additive in. If I'm going to somewhere like Alston Ferry, I uh, they they like the krill there, so I go with sort of red pellets and maybe in krill flavouring and put a bit of krill glug. Now I add a little bit of krill. If you're going to add flavourings, add it. Add a little bit now, but also when they come out, you can still add a little bit on after as well. Once they've gone through the soaking process, and that gives them a little bit stickier. Or put them on onto your feeder and just put a little bit of a squeeze of the glug onto there and uh, in fact I'll, I've got my my bag next to me so I'll see if I, I've got any in here let's have a look in this zip pocket so we've had about 25 seconds 30 seconds or so in that soaking while I'm just trying to have a look in this bag and we have got some glug oh perfect so a monster crab so this is the one that I would use um, if I'm going to um, house of ferry, this is what it's for, and I would soak it in there and then I would put a drizzle in with it after. If you look at some of my other videos, they've got some on as well. Um, you, the monster baits and dips that we've got like bait enhancers, and then I've got sort of different like bananas and cream. There, they tend to with my monster baits. I put sometimes put them in, in with the pellets when I soak them, but a lot of the time, what I do with those is I, I put it on top. And if you ever watch our the catch video, the 24 hour challenge, um, you see me use a lot of the Monster Baits products in the ground bait and the pellets that we use when we are uh, fishing uh, and we're putting the bait in to obviously the feeder and things like that. So that's been soaking for a minute now. So what I'm gonna do is just drain that water off. So if you have, if you have a pellet feeder, uh, sorry, a pellet wetter, You'll obviously get be able to take that water content out of there a lot easier um, because obviously that's what they're made for. So I've taken that off. I've got a little bit of a tub here. I'm just going to push them into that little tub because we're going to need this glass in a little bit. So have a look at those expanders. So now those pellets at the moment they're a little bit tacky on the outside, but they're so, they're still they're still. Uh, hard in the middle and that's it, that's where you this leaving it for 15 minutes is going to come into key uh, and obviously that's where we're going to get the, the texture that we want so I will uh, move on into the wonders of editing and we'll come back and have a look at what they look like Hi guys, like I said we're just going to go through micro pellets but just before we do uh, just a couple of things and reasons why I would use um, expander pellets and where and what times of year. So this time of year where there's venues where they get caught a lot on pellets, expander pellets is, is my go-to uh, if I'm fishing for carp or I'm fishing for silver fish, especially skimmers. And the, just the lightness of the presentation, the, they're easy to, to suck up. And I usually fish them in conjunction with micros, um, just slightly wetted as we're gonna go on to in a minute. So really easy to use really simple to prepare um, and the only downside to them is uh, once you strike you've got to put another one on but nine times out of ten they're that soft that the fish suck them in and they're really easy to hook um, so again when you're doing it you want to be th looking at a thin so either maggot hook or a pellet hook um, obviously I usually fish 18s um, if you're going for a very small fish then tw maybe 20s so let's have a look at those micro pellets and uh, see uh, have a little bit of information about those. Right guys, so we're back and as you can see I've poured the pellets out into here, they've had that 15 minutes of soaking and we've got a lovely little pile which is perfect consistency so I'll just give those a little squeeze like we would do if they're on onto feed and you can see the straight away they're in a ball and they've, they've maintained that structure and then we rub the hands together and the break up. So what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to bring the camera in close, you can see that, and then what we're going to do is get a glass and show you how, the, how it breaks down when it goes into the water. Just a little bit of information of how it, how it works uh, in, in order to get it, when it breaks down and it hits the bottom and you're just seeing that reaction of, of how the bait works and affects when it hits the water and why it's important to have the right amount of soaking time, not only for the cast um, to stay on but when it hits the water also. So let's get round to the close-up. 
Right guys, so now you can see this pile up at close. Again, I'm gonna show you, putting it into my hand, squeezing that tight, and that creates that ball. And then that ball we can rub with his hands and it goes straight back into pellets. So they're not overdone and they're not underdone. So I'm just gonna scoop them up into a little bit of a pile. And I'm gonna make a ball like I've just done, like so. And then I'm just going to get a glass of water, stand that on the side, and we'll have a look how that breaks down. So when it goes into the water, straight away you can see that it's starting to fizz and starting to break down around the sides. The sides are coming off. You can see there, look, the debris around in the bottom. But they've stayed in a ball, which is the most important thing for when they've hit. But now as the water works through, you can see the bubbles coming off, it's breaking down the pellets and they're coming into individual little pellets. You can see it now, they're breaking down to individual pellets and that's going to sit perfectly uh, in your hook bait next to your feeder. But it's also stayed in when I've dropped it in and it's still maintained its strength. Um, and that's all to do with how much you soak it. If you soak it too much and it's too soft then it'll stick to that feeder and it'll take ages to come off and it'll break down like paste. If it's not on enough, it's not been done enough, they won't stick and they won't break down at all uh, and they'll fall off on the cast. So let's go back to the main picture and we'll just wrap this all up. Right guys, I hope this has given you uh, a little bit of information about pellets and help you when obviously the, the, the weather picks up but also for the, the different types of pellets at this time of year. Um, like I say, pellets are a universal bait. You can use them any time of year in any in any venue really. Most fish now are bred on them uh, and will eat pellets. Uh, it's just about finding out what colours, what flavours work for you and it's always good to carry a little few varieties around with your sizes, colours, uh, especially if you're banding them uh, on a feeder to to try and be that little bit of advantage uh, but hopefully these little bits of information ways of prepping them and little bits of thought process behind it behind them will uh, will help you catch more fish and feel a little bit better about when you use pellets so thank you for watching as always join us on the instagram angling underscore for you join us on the facebook group at angling for you a uh, great bunch of guys on there uh, really good uh, information and obviously chatting about all the bits and bobs that uh, go along with fishing. So join us on there and win uh, for you on Facebook. Um, like and subscribe guys as always. Thanks for watching. Time